What is up everybody? I'm no looks given and for this video we are back with another Pan's Shadow game. I played this game right after the game that I uploaded earlier this morning and it's because I think Pan's Shadow is really really good that I wanted to play some more of them. I said in my patch notes that I think this hero is going to be really, really strong and something that you're going to start seeing a lot more of here on this channel and just on the ladder in general, whereas before Pan Shadow wouldn't be too common. But really, the hero is just super consistent. That's what the hero power does. It says that in the late game, you get to be consistent. And that's a pretty strong thing in Storybook Brawl, to be able to consistently play different strategies. I am going to try out some different things with Pan Shadow. Um, I believe Sunday's video is going to be a Pan Shadow video as well. Uh, so we will have some more Pan Shadow coming in the future, but it's not all going to be the same stuff, but definitely going to be playing a lot more of this hero and uh, having a lot of fun with it so far at least in these first two games and we'll we'll look at you know if you can if you can put together the comp once well maybe that's a fluke but if we can run back to back games with this same comp same strategy going on well then it starts to look a lot more powerful so going to see if we can't slay with this polywoggle here and the combat works out perfectly for us and we actually get that Shadow Assassin, which I've told you is one of those key minions to pay attention to, or key characters to pay attention to on Pan Shadow. Because once you hit level 4, you're no longer going to be able to find Shadow Assassins. So, I do have this pair of Golden Chickens, which could potentially help us find some tier 3 minions once we level up, but it's just so good on the board to just sell these chickens and purchase these crafties, get a 4-4 four, four, and a 6-6. Six, six. That's just going to make us a lot stronger. So that's what we'll do. And there's definitely a lot of strength to a Pan Shadow, very similar to Zelhua. Um, tomorrow we're actually going to be looking at my first Zelhua game on the new patch, but... Uh, pretty similar to be able to, if you can survive this early part of the game and not take damage, well then you're just set up really, really well for the late game. And now we're moving into 3.0 with an extra gold even from that chair bear. So things are going pretty nicely here. And I will buy the lucky candy rain and then roll because we've got two different pairs that we could pick up and we wind up picking up this crafty and then the treasures that we see aren't super exciting um but i will take monster manual there's a lot of tier four monsters that could potentially be good um mainly we are going to try to look for dragons but there is something like chupacabra that we could potentially make work with the monster manual i do consider the ring of regen but we're still at 40 so i'm not super inclined to take that and then i actually frontline my shadow assassin because i want it to die actually uh rather than not making much use of the monster manual so that is the plan baby dragon unfortunately that means is going to be able to take out a fan but the rest of this combat looks like we are in the clear for and uh, Shadow Assassin isn't going to die anyway so oh well um, now we get to pick up a vampire for one gold vampire also a monster so I will be taking that and I guess I'll move Shadow Assassin to the back line if that's the case though I could yeah I guess I could move Lucky over and then play the vampire in slot two and that seems fine, just in that it allows us to let our monsters die. So that's kind of the idea here. Um, basically, what you see me indicating there is like, I was thinking about picking up the Princess White, but we are almost, well, not almost, but we want to make use of Tier 3 while we're here. And when I'm rolling and able to find another Shadow Assassin, that's obviously really good. So the the idea there was maybe we can find uh, some more Shadow Assassins, potentially even triple them, before we get out of level 3 
and then never see them again. Uh, so I believe in yesterday's video, I only got the two, or not yesterday's, to earlier today's video, um, we only got the two Shadow Assassins, and um, we'll see if we are able to triple it, because those Tier 3 treasures, specifically Bad Moon, is just really, really good with the Slay Comp. So it would be kind of nice to pick up, but it's just kind of a nice-to-have thing. I don't think it's necessary or needed for the comp. It's, uh, it's just cool if you can get it. And it looks like we are going to get some damage here from this Humpty Dumpty plus that pair of supports. So nicely done by the Merlin first person to damage us. We get to take another one cost Vainpire though. And now we are definitely rolling for tier threes. And basically we probably want to full roll down here to try to find Vainpire and Shadow Assassin. And we get the Shadow Assassin, which is pretty sweet. That's going to give us a bunch more stats, but the treasures really ain't it. This would be the only time to pick up Crystal Ball, so we could take that, but we're not going to be able to find Spell Weavers or Wizards Familiars for the rest of the game, so um, Mages are definitely not the comp that you want to be playing on Pan Shadow. This is a hero that's the total opposite of Peter Pants, as we talked about. Interestingly, we could get looks on a, another Tier 3 treasure, but I think that the one gold to roll is just more valuable here because I would rather potentially lock a Vainpire. I think I would have uh, strongly considered locking a Vainpire here. You like buy the Vainpire, roll, and then buy a random four that shows up in the next shop. But I didn't really want to be locking for Lucky and spending my entire next turn just picking up two luckies and hoping that we find a bad moon. That seems like a bad plan to me. So I do think we're going to lose this one because my opponent attacked with a stag. Generally, that's all it takes. So crafty is pretty big. Uh, and then Fanny does potentially get to do something nice here. No, not quite. Oh, we could... No, we're going to lose. We're going to still lose. Okay. Yeah, that was a close one, though. But we take four damage down to 30. Not too bad, because now we actually have a hero power. So can't really be too upset with that one. And an interesting choice here where I could feed the Kraken, and that's kind of feed on the Kraken, you know? Um, it, it feeds me uh, two rolls. So I kind of like that. You really do have to pay attention to your gold when you are playing Pan Shadow, because you you once you like if you hit 4.0 naturally, normally the only thing you can do is buy two units exactly on that turn. So with this two rolls, we're going to be able to pick up a dragon roll and then pick up another lightning dragon. The first one gets that fancy pants bonus, and then the second one does not. But honestly, this makes us a lot stronger as well. So. I do think that it is pretty sweet to uh, be able to add these Lightning Dragons to our board, and that's the build. Um, same same build, same idea as last game. Like I said, we're just going for consistency. We're trying to see, can we do it again? This was literally the game after the one that I showed off earlier today. Apologies if I've already belabored that point. I think that's a real word, right? Belabored? Um, sounds a little bit made up, but the Lightning Dragons are going to take out some of my opponent's supports. That's pretty nice. And then my opponents, the rest of their front line isn't huge, but uh, it's still going to be a close combat here. And we are going to just barely lose taking five. Um, this is kind of a funny game because we just wind up taking five like a bunch of times. Uh, then I will pick up two more Lightning Dragons here. The first one is going to get the... Um, uh, fancy pants bonus, and I will take a moon song horn despite or not moon song horn, it's called something else. Uh, and then I have to decide if I want to lock a, another lightning dragon or if I want to roll for river wash mermaid. And basically, you got to look at the way that the typical pan shadow cash is likely to play out. I consider not locking it because I really do want River Wash Mermaid. It'll start to grow my shadow assassins. It's good to start growing these dragons early, but I think I'm going to be able to triple two dragons here and 
uh, they will be able to gain some stats just from the fancy pants that I picked up earlier. So kind of an interesting way to scale a board, but it does work. And basically, next turn with 10 gold, potentially 11 if I want to pick up that Forbidden Fruit, and then more if I want to sell off some units, we are going to be able to buy Lightning Dragon, roll two to five times for a... Um, river wash mermaid so that is the idea we're just going to be forcing this comp pretty hard and we're, we're set up well to do so we've got two dragons and we've got the shadow assassin so i think that we can make it all work and these dragons are doing some work against all of my opponents so far um Dragons are interesting because they're like more likely to slay almost than a typical slay unit because it's just easier to slay when you are attacking that back row. We are just going to barely lose this one again. I said a uh, small spoiler, but just taking five damage every turn against all of these people. But you know what? We're also growing our Shadow Assassin with Monster Manual. Interesting thing to note here that I think Pan Shadow is not that great with Lucky because you wind up just making everything cost two less, but that doesn't ultimately change the number of things that you can buy because it never lands on a two drop and just gives you totally free econ. Speaking of econ though, I'm going to skip that treasure and then roll into River Wash Mermaid. So now I've got to figure out which two of my units I want to sell in order to pick up this mermaid. And I will decide to play the Vampire over the Lucky and just sell these two dwarves. I think that's the idea. Not that I'm ever going to triple this Lucky, but or, or triple this Vampire, but it's just a bigger unit. So might as well run that. And then uh, we can put the, uh, the Vampire a little bit earlier, potentially. Oh, that's right, that's right. I've got the horn. Um, so everything in the front row is being supported. So that is also why I can put the River Wash Mermaid into spot seven. I forgot that we already picked up the horn and now next turn we're gonna be level five and we can start to roll for Baba Yagas. And that's basically, we'll have six gold to roll for a Baba Yaga. And actually we've got seven gold to roll for a Baba Yaga because we can sell this backline vampire as well. Um, so that's, that's really the full plan. These dragons are both going to slay and survive, which is pretty awesome because then they get to slay again. And then Crafty even gets to get a slay. Oh, and Vampire too. Very nice, because my opponent summons a Black Cat. So all of that works out pretty nicely for us. The Shadow Assassin getting bigger, though not really super relevant. Uh, I will pick up another Lightning Dragon, because it seems like a good use of the Fancy Pants. And then I take another River Wash Mermaid. So Baba Yaga will have to wait for a moment but I will roll down to try to lock it in the shop for the next turn. But that is going to be it for this turn. Do see a Grim Soul, but that's not really what we want for this stage of the game. Um, we're just all in on these Lightning Dragons here. And um, then I also move the Shadow Assassin to the front row. I feel like that could be kind of cool too. Basically, all of these dragons are going to attack... Uh, some of them are definitely getting to the point where they can survive, and then we could potentially get like a little bit of extra health on the Shadow Assassin too. Um, though I could see backlining the Shadow Assassin, I might even change it in this last second. Yeah, okay, I am going to go ahead and uh, just change it back to Frontline, leading with the Dragons, and then the Crafty. This is just a safer combat for the turn, and... I do want to just be mindful of my health total. We're not that low. We're right in the center of this lobby. But the chances of it working out... The thing is, all the dragons are probably going to get in there and trade and die. And then the Shadow Assassin is very likely, if we lose the 50-50 to get first attack, the Shadow Assassin is very likely to just die by getting attacked by whatever my opponent attacks with. So putting my ranged unit on the back is just slightly safer and is going to allow us, I believe, to... No, no, we just barely lose this one again, take another six damage. So pretty funny, but glad I played it safe there. We do see two burning trees here. That is kind of fun. 
uh, and then another one, so we could have tripled it, but we are looking for Baba Yaga. This is the comp. We'll slot that in, and now that we've got the Baba Yaga and that we're playing up against the Ghost, we are definitely going to frontline this Shadow Assassin. Then I find another Baba Yaga, so I do have to do some maths here to see which is correct to do. Do I want two Baba Yagas, or do I want uh, two River Wash Mermaids? And uh, yeah, which of which of these things is correct? But I think it is correct to play the uh, the two river wash mermaids. This gives us four sleigh triggers, whereas playing the uh, double Baba plus, or I'm sorry, yeah, this gives us four, and then playing Baba river wash. Oh, also gives us four. Oh, is that right? Oh, so maybe it is better to just play in this scenario. Um, well, it's the same, so because it's the same, it's just better to play Baba Yaga because it is a ranged unit. Is that right? Well, it doesn't really matter. It's four slay triggers regardless, um, so not going to make a huge deal. This is technically like safer if they have Lightning Dragon or something, and actually they do. So, okay, calculated. Um, we're going to get in with our Lightning Dragons and take out my opponent's entire back line there. Uh, so pretty silly. And then uh, take out the copycat that has uh, that's, that's supporting nothing. And then their lightning dragon gets to come in and, and trade with our Baba Yaga. Uh, and actually grow the Baba Yaga too. So that's kind of interesting that it gets to grow with the monster manual. Um, Lancelot is somewhat tempting here. But I do think I just want to roll for... We've got so many pairs and we are pan shadow so i think that my gold is just well spent rolling so i will roll and i roll into hand of midas or mimic chest and one of the things that i have to notice here is that next turn is 6.0 so if we replace this uh take this hand of midas right now then next turn we could potentially roll for you know just like a baba yaga or something like that we do see baba yaga here but next turn, like, we've got pretty good odds to roll into Jormungand. And I also am somewhat interested in potentially picking up more Riverwash Mermaids, just because then we get to combine those as well. So that would also be an option. But don't really want to do that. Kind of just want to spend this hand on Jormungand. That is the plan. And we are going to also cast a Falling Stars, which doesn't really do too much. Maybe it makes the dragons slightly more likely to slay, but for the most part, it's not really going to do anything for us here. So um, the dragons are going to get in and get their slays to start this combat off nicely. They are also all going to die, which means that... because uh, Okay, we do get first attack, but then Doubly is going to trade with our Shadow Assassin, and it's actually a pretty close combat after that. My opponent Pigomorphs my Baba Yaga, which is pretty huge, because I think otherwise we won. But we are going to lose. Luckily, we still have some health. We go down to five, so we cannot take five again. We've been taking five every combat, but we have been getting stronger. So I do feel like we are in a reasonable position this game, but now we are back to rolling. I will take this River Wash Mermaid. It only costs us two. Um, it does mean that technically we have less Slay Triggers, but I want to be able to pick it up now if I find another River Wash or another Baba Yaga, then we can... Um, just easily slot that into our team as well. And I'm going to toss the Fancy Pants to um, uh, pick up a nice little treasure there. And then I see Germangand. So that is quite a nice unit to be able to pick up. There is also a Baba Yaga, but I definitely want to pick up Germangand here. I will sell my um, Vampires, and then we have an upgraded Germangand, and then we can even lock for this Baba Yaga or for this uh, Lightning Dragon, um, or both of them. Uh, definitely a possibility to just uh, want to try to pick up both of them here. And uh, now I think I will backline the Shadow Assassin once more. Uh, but next turn, maybe we cut the other Lightning Dragon and uh, then frontline the Shadow Assassin again and play the Baba Yaga. Interesting there too, I could have cast the Forbidden Fruit and that probably would have been right, given me a little bit more econ to use in future turns because I 
my health total is irrelevant at this point. We're at five, so if we lose a combat, we're dead. Um, so it could have just been fine to cast that spell. We are going to get a kill onto the Fates here, and that was a pretty commanding position with all of those dragons going at it at the start of combat. And now you can see the comp come to its full potential. Um, honestly, I kind of talked over that. So maybe we'll go and just watch that combat again because we're going to cut the dragons for this next one. So uh, here it is. We just take out my opponent's entire back line. German gain goes from 50 up to 160, then from 160 up to uh, 290, and then up to 400, and then finally up to 540 once it slays itself. And uh, so it is getting some like passive stats on itself while also really just taking advantage of all of these dragons and river wash mermaids. So plan here is take Baba Yaga, move Jormungan to second position, use just my upgraded dragons and then play these Baba Yagas. And now I'm just rolling for more Baba Yagas to potentially triple that grab an evil eye or looking for more Jormungans. I could pick up a Riverwash Mermaid too. That is technically more slays uh, because it's uh, better to play more Riverwash Mermaids than Baba Yaga. I think I'm finally just getting all of the math done here, but um, I, I do want to just like sit down with those numbers, maybe make like an infographic or something and uh, double check everything myself, but it does seem like it is better to be uh, river wash mermaiding, um, play two river washes and then one um, Baba Yaga. Unless, I think if you can upgrade the Baba Yaga, then two upgraded Baba Yagas is better. Um, and then maybe there's also some interesting math that gets changed around uh, depending on what treasures you have too. Um, because uh, for the most part, we're looking at any time you're talking about a horn game, um, but then there's also evil eye math to consider and then other slays that your frontline units can have. But none of my frontline units innately slay. It's all just slays that we are giving to them with support. So... Um, Pretty nice stuff. Shadow Assassin's going to be able to grow a little bit, as is the Jormungand. And we hit this Sharon for a nice little 19 down to 9. And now we are up against Wonder Waddle. So one of the awkward parts with this comp, it is a little bit tough to get the dragons to stick around. So they kind of slay and trade, which means that they don't get to... Uh, deal as much damage to my opponent because I'm not playing as many units. Um, I consider taking the Medusa, and I actually think I do take it, but I think it is a mistake to do so. Um, maybe I'm getting it confused with a different game, or maybe I take one later. Um, but one of the tricky things with this comp is you want to... you you. You need to play the Riverwash Mermaid to activate the Lightning Dragons, and you need to play the Baba Yagas to scale the Jormungans and things even more. But it basically puts you in a position where right now we're really only playing four units. And that can be a little bit scary and can also mean that if your opponents find some ways to play around it, which there are a lot of things that you can do, um, yeah, we're, we're kind of in a scary spot because all we're all in on this German Gand. And it is pretty consistent, but there are some ways to play around it, which I think we're going to see more people adapt to that as this strategy becomes more popular as well. And uh, you also lose a little bit of a surprise factor, like the Sharon that we just played against knows now that this is what we're doing, and thus can play around it as well. Um, does look like we're going to come short against killing the Wonder Waddle, like I said, because both of our dragons died, and then we wind up being six damage short. So now we are up against this ghost. So... We will be able to scale a little bit, that part is nice, but we um, are giving our opponents more time to like potentially find answers and things to what we're doing. But it would be nice to be able to put another Jormungand in, because that does give us some, at least, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, 
uh, just safety. Safety is the word. It's a very it's a very simple word. Don't know why I couldn't think of it, but uh, couldn't get there. I am somewhat tempted to lock for Baba Yaga. I'm probably going to rip off this um, spinning gold here, but somewhat tempted to lock for Baba Yaga because tripling Baba Yaga could be cool. But now that I have this backup Jormungand, I'm also thinking about, well, how can I get this guy in? And maybe I can do something like this, and this now lets us play a slightly safer board because yes, we're still all in on the dragons, but now if we get Pigomorphed or medusa or Rotten apple tree or something, now we've got three potential units that can carry us. We've got the two Jormungans plus the Shadow Assassin. But the rest of the stuff we kind of have to keep. We, we could toss the... Um, Baba Yaga as well, but the Baba Yaga does give us a ton of stats, so kind of hard to toss that one too. But let's see if we are up against the Sharon or the Wonder Waddle. So we're up against the Sharon for the final fight. That is the plan. I would love to triple the Jormungan, though that seems like a stretch. What else would I like to do? Maybe just cast a spell. That's probably the best use of our gold on this final turn, is just find a spell that we can cast and uh, use that. The other thing that I could do is I could cut one Lightning Dragon and then play something like that Medusa or this Jormungand. And this is definitely an avenue that we could take. Um, basically, we just play one Dragon down and that allows us to potentially play a little bit safer if they're trying to tech against us with like a soul tack or something like that. Uh, I'll roll rather than pick up lightning bolt. I don't think lightning bolt's gonna help us too much, but one of the other things that we can do that will make our board a little bit safer is to put Shadow Assassin in position one. And I think I talked about this a little bit earlier, um, or maybe not. Maybe I haven't talked about it this video. Um, but basically what we can do is put Shadow Assassin in one and then Jormungand in five. And now even if our Lightning Dragons would fail to slay, Shadow Assassin's still going to be able to slay. So that's still going to get us some Jormungand triggers and a way to grow that. Now, unfortunately, my opponent takes out my backline Jormungand with Lightning Bolt. And they've also done a really nice maneuver here. So I want to point this out and give some props to my opponent. But they are playing down a unit, and that is totally intentional. And you might also notice that they are playing two frontline support units. Both of these units would die to Lightning Dragon. Both of these units would not. So they have done they have done a complete reversal here and just backlined their two big units and said, "Okay, I'm going to play a unit down." And then they also have got the scam going on. They've got this Medusa and they've got this Rotten Apple Tree. So. Props to my opponent for finding the scam. They also wand of weirdinged a lightning bolt and hit the same Jormungand twice, so that part was a little bit annoying. Um, Medusa isn't going to scam, but the Rotten Apple Tree is going to take out my big Jormungand, and then they take out the rest of my carries, and I'm dead and we lose. So very well played by my opponent. I still wanted to showcase this game uh, because I think that it is actually really cool to talk about how my opponent was able to outdo the Pan's Shadow in this game, but also talk about just how consistent this strategy can be with Pan's Shadow. Um, the Shadow Assassin is optional, though it's nice to play Shadow Assassin with Pan Shadow, uh, just for thematic reasons. But really, the, the core of the comp is just the Lightning Dragons and then the River Wash Mermaids and then the Baba Yagas. It does wind up being a little bit more all-in than some other ways that you can build this German, German Gang comp. Um, though we did have the opportunity to pick up Lancelot at one point in the game, uh, we just decided not to and decided to keep going all in on this Lightning Dragon strategy because it was a little bit splashier. However, it was uh, much easier to thwart as well because it was a little bit more of a consistent strategy in exactly what it was trying to do. So that's going to be it for me for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, small programming notes. 
because I still have a backlog of stuff from last season, the next four days at least are all going to have three videos. Uh, there's going to be one post commentary just like this one with stuff from the new patch. There's going to be one post commentary with stuff from the old patch. And then there is going to be one Twitch game with stuff from the old patch as well. So trying to still get through some of that cool content that I had on the previous patch and bang through it as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, you can look forward to three videos each day over this coming weekend. That's going to be it though for this video and for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm Noblex Given. Peace.